everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, Happy New Year! I think I'm posting this on the 1st or the 2nd. I'm filming it on New Year's Eve. It's like 6 o'clock. I'm about to go and pick up my friends from work who are going to come here and spend New Year's Eve with us. Um, and I thought it would be a good time to film my goals video for 2022. I've been thinking about it a lot and the last two videos I made were reflecting on my reading over the past year, what I've read, how it's gone, that kind of thing. And that has really informed my goals for this year quite a lot. I think this is the most um, introspective I've ever got uh, while reflecting on the year. And I've really thought carefully about like what I'm choosing to read. So my two main focuses for my goals for 2022 um, is basically quality over quantity. So firstly, I have um, goals about what I'm reading. And then I also have goals about kind of how I'm approaching reading. So to start off with the basic thing of how many books I want to read, I thought really carefully about this because the last year I set my Goodreads goal to I think, I think 12 books initially, and then I think I upped it. Um, because I do want to track what I'm reading and I don't want to set it to zero. I do want to have some kind of challenge. Um, but I set it so much lower than what I normally read, which is about 80 books because I was finishing up teacher training and starting a new career as a teacher and I didn't know what my year was going to look like. And I ended up reading just over 50 books this year, which is cool. And going into next year, I also don't know really what my year is going to look like. I have a temporary job as a teacher, but it's just maternity cover. And after that, I don't really know what I'm doing. But since my overall goal this year is to focus on quality rather than quantity and what I'm reading, I'm doing something a bit different with my reading aim this year. And my aim is to read 25 good books. And by good, I mean four or five stars. So I'm not aiming for a total number of read books. Maybe I'll read 25 four star books all in a row and that will be my goal achieved. Probably not. But so like the overall number of books that I read this year, I'm deciding is irrelevant. The only thing that is relevant is reading actually good books. And I'm really hoping that this will help me because last year in my goals video, I said, oh, I want to do quality over quantity. I want to read really good books. I have these genres that I'm excited about and I want to read. I have so many good books on my shelf and I didn't read a lot of them. A lot of books I picked up either because I thought they would be quick, pacey reads or because they were audiobooks and I thought they'd be easy listens, something that I can get through quickly. And that is very detrimental. Like, even though I decided that quantity wasn't important, I still found myself trying to get like the number of books I'd read as high as I could and that really led to a not very good reading year. So many of the books I read this year were really forgettable or just like kind of mediocre and fine but like not stand out. In an effort to kind of read more of my own books that I am excited for, I want to do this. Because the thing is is that if I'm picking the book that I think will be the best, it's not always necessarily going to be the book that I can read the fastest and get through the fastest. And a lot of them, especially like non-fiction books, I feel really funny about because I have so many non-fiction books that I think can be amazing, but I don't read them because it's almost like I feel like I have to really be able to devote myself, my full brain, my full attention. I can't do audiobook in case I get distracted and I can't be tired and, and I really have to focus so I don't pick them up. Uh, because, you know, if I can only read it when I'm really focused, it'll take me ages to read. And if I kind of shift my goal to be reading good books, then I'm hoping that that will motivate myself to pick up books I am sure will be good, even if they take me longer to read. So that's like the main goal with my reading this year is overall number of books, I have no goal. My goal is 25 four or five star books. Another goal about like how I'm reading and how I'm approaching reading is I want to be much more careful about the audiobooks that I listen to. I read, no, I listen to a lot of audiobooks because I have an Audible subscription and also a Scribd subscription. So I listen to quite a lot and I find myself 
listening to audiobooks because they feel kind of free, especially script where it's like unlimited um, rather than audio audible where you get one credit. Um, it's like they feel free. And if I find an audiobook and I think, oh, that sounds pretty good. And I just start listening to it. And a lot of the audiobooks I've listened to this year were forgettable and, and not that great. And I feel like it's because I'm not choosing my audiobooks with much care because they just feel free and because they feel like bonus and extra listens compared to the physical reading I do. And it means that the audiobooks that I end up listening to often are not that great. So my rule for myself, I was going to say I should only listen to audiobooks that I own a physical copy of, which I've gone back and forth on how I feel about over the years, because on the one hand, it's another way of reading a book that I want to read so much that I bought it. But on the other hand, it feels silly to use a service that I pay for to listen to a book that I have already paid for. So I kind of go back and forth on that. But I mean, I'm paying for the feature of the audio rather than the book itself because I already own it. I'm not going to make that my goal or like a rule that I can only listen to audiobooks that I already own. Because I think that's a bit strict and there are some things that I just don't buy for certain reasons. But um, I, my rule is going to be if I wouldn't be willing to buy it and pay full price for it, then I'm not going to listen to it. Because there are some books that I have listened to on audio that I listened to because they felt free and that I would not have paid money for if audio were not an option. So that's kind of my rule for myself. If it's a bit of like a throwaway, eh, I'll give it a go kind of thing, then I'm not going to listen to it. And I'm only going to listen to things that I would be completely willing to pay full price for if I couldn't listen to them on audio and I wanted to read it so much I had to buy it. That's my rule. So in terms of what I would, would like to read, I'm not setting too many like, you have to read this and you have to read this. It's more like intentions. This is the kind of thing I'm hoping to do and I want to do with my reading. And they're very similar to last year because like I was saying in my last videos, I'm still interested in all the same stuff, but I haven't really read much of it this year. So this is me trying to figure out why I haven't read that stuff and how I can read that stuff. Firstly is to continue to read diversely and read more diversely next year. Um, I talked about this in one of my last videos, by diversely, I kind of just mean anyone who has a different experience to me as a white western woman, I suppose. So, you know, anything that's translated, anything that's from people of colour, people whose lives and personal experiences are different to mine, um, because I read a lot of books by white western women. Um, I'm not going to be tracking any specifics like that, because... I feel it can just become a bit like box checky and it feels a bit reductive to boil someone down to their various identities in order that I can list them and tick them off as having read them. Generally trying to read a diverse range of voices and this year 26% of my reading was that and I want that to be higher next year. I'm not going to make a percentage I'm just going to try and do it a lot. And I have a lot on my shelves already of books like that, that I can pick from. Secondly, there are a few genres that I really want to focus on, most of which are the same as last year. The first one is food writing. Um, I have so much food writing on my shelf that I, I just haven't picked up that sounds so good. Um, historical fiction. Uh, I'm not sure if that was on my list last year, but it's something that I got more into this year and realised is something that is really worth devoting more time to this year. So next year, I want to read a lot more of it. Um, sci-fi, I really enjoy sci-fi and I read an okay amount this year. I read eight of the 52 books I read were sci-fi, which is okay, but certainly could be better. And I have a bunch on my shelf that I want to read. Um, and then finally, it's just, I like I said before, my own non-fiction books that I already own, that I don't read because I feel like I'm not worthy of reading them in my current mindset when I'm always stressed and busy, so they just don't get read. So I want to push myself to actually read them no matter what mindset I'm in. I do have a couple of like specific book lists that I want to read. 
Uh, one of them is I want to read um, all of the books that I got for Christmas this year. I got 11 books for Christmas, not including one that I'm about to speak to, uh, speak about. And just every year I post my Christmas book haul and then they sat, sit on my shelves. And this is to go hand in hand with my goal of, of reading my own books. Just specifically this year, I picked out all of my Christmas books myself because they were either presents from my wish list or because my dad took me to Waterstones and I picked out books or because I went to the Waterstones Boxing Day sale and bought some books for myself, which I'm counting as my Christmas presents. Um, and, and yeah, I, sh I should read all of them because I picked them out. They're books I wanted. And it's just kind of to prove a point to myself of not getting a bunch of books for Christmas and then not reading them. Secondly, I have two books that I want to read throughout the year and I'm really quite looking forward to it. The first one I mentioned in my Christmas book haul and is the other book that I just mentioned. Um, it's The Way Back Almanac by Melinda Salisbury. So it's an almanac for the year. It's split up into every month and every month it just talks about different seasonal things. So it has um, like gardening and things that you can grow. It has recipes, uh, lifestyle type activities you can do, uh, things like that. I think there's like a body butter recipe for one of the winter months. It's just all seasonally foodie lifestyle-y stuff that is really really nice and then the other one is a book I picked up a few months ago I think I got it with a voucher that I got for my birthday um, and it's the food almanac which is edited by Miranda York it says recipes and stories for a year at the table and again this one is split um into the months of the year and each month there is like a, a page or two just like summarizing the month and the feel of that month this time of the year it has features on different seasonal like vegetables or ingredients or herbs and it has recipes it has short pieces of food writing relevant to that month and it has a huge range of different writers hopefully you can see some of them there yeah both of these um <laughs> sound really really nice and it's like a it's like a personal goal without getting too off track here it's a personal goal of mine to kind of live more in the moment I feel like I'm a real worrier and I always have to know what's coming up next what are we doing next and it's like I always have whatever's on the horizon I'm always thinking about it now and I, it often means that I don't value what's going on right now because my mind is in the future whether that's because I'm excited or because I'm stressed or I don't know what's going to happen and it worries me or whatever so I'm hoping that by every month checking in with something seasonal that really talks about like the moment that we're in now that will really help me with that and then finally my last goal is to really focus on um reading books that I owned prior to 2022 because um, a lot of the reading I did this year was books that I bought this year and then read this year which it is like kind of long term a goal of mine to be able to do that more and read books that I've just bought and brought home but in the meantime I have almost 200 books on my shelves that I haven't read and I want to work on getting that number down. Like I'm getting to a point where that just feels a bit much. I feel guilty whenever I buy new books and some, like so many of them are gonna be really great and I really want to read more of them. And I'm finding out a point where I'm not buying too many books at the moment. I know I just got a bunch for Christmas, but that's the exception. I used to haul 10, 15 books every month on this channel years ago. And I don't, I don't really do that anymore. I buy so few books these days, I'm very proud of myself. So I'm finally at a point where I feel like I can actually start working on those books that I've owned for a long time. So I've used on my phone an app called Libib and I have made a specific shelf of all the unread books I own right now. Uh, so that throughout 2022, whenever I read one of them, like I'll know whether I bought it that year or whether I bought it the year before or something like that. So I'm specifically going to be focusing on reading as many of those books as I can and not getting too distracted by new things. So this kind of brings me on to channel goals. I have a couple of things I want to talk about with my channel. Not too much because to be honest I don't know how it's going to go. I uh, earlier in the year, or was it last year now, don't remember, basically uh, 
quit my channel because I started working in teaching, primary teaching, and part of me felt very uncomfortable with having a, a public channel like this that, you know, potentially parents of children in my class might come across. Um, and that's something that I'm still internally battling with. I came back to it because I didn't end up getting a job with my own class. I was a supply teacher and I felt more comfortable <laughs> doing it like that. But I'm still on the fence about it. I think there's ways I can do it where if I make sure to, you know, stay professional. I mean, I talk about books, you know, I don't do a lot of vlogs or personal stuff. It's books. There's just something I feel a bit uncomfortable with. So I'm still unsure if I'll even have a channel at the end of next year. The reason I just came back is because I really enjoy it. And I don't want to have to stop because I love being able to talk books and kind of using it to hold myself accountable. Um... But so we'll see. But until I decide about that, I want to commit to doing two videos a month. Um, the first one will be a wrap up. I don't know at what point of the month it's going to go up. It will just be kind of once a month ish. Whenever I've read a decent number of books, there'll be a wrap up at some point each month. Um, and the other one is going to be right at the end of the month or like the beginning of the next month. And it's going to be to check in with my goals every month. So there's going to be three elements to it. The first one is going to be a kind of balancing the book style thing inspired by Emma from Drinking By My Shelf, who is amazing, um, which basically means if you don't watch her channel, I count how many books I've bought this month and added to my TBR. I subtract how many books I've read or DNF, so they've left my TBR. And I want to balance it so that my TBR ideally goes down I'm not going to be setting any goals for it though, it's just going to be to check in with myself every month, what, what is it looking like, what is the state of it, am I doing well, am I not doing well, I'm not setting goals, I'm just going to continually be looking at it. The other thing is I'm going to be checking how many books specifically I have read um, that I owned before 2022, so not just my overall TBR, specifically the older books, how many of them have I read. And then the third one is going to be specifically the books that I got for Christmas. Did I read any of those that month? Because it's about one a month that I need to read. <sighs> so I'm going to commit to hopefully a wrap up video and a video where every month I check in with my reading goals and see how it's going to try and keep myself accountable and try and stay on track, basically. Um, I would like to make more videos than that a month. My favourite kind of videos to make are recommendations videos and I'm hoping that I can start to make some kind of more specific recommendations videos. So I just posted a historical uh, book recommendations video and I'd like to like sub categorise that down like, you know, historical books set in this time or historical books about this thing. Um, so I'd, I'm thinking about different like uh, like reading lists, you know, a reading list for this topic. So I don't know. I'm hoping to commit to more videos than just those two but I'm hoping that I can keep those two as kind of like a, a routine every month to check in with my reading. Um, yeah kind of like that plus these books that I'm going to be looking at every month I think are going to be a way to kind of stay grounded, stay in the moment, stay thinking about now because like not knowing what my job is going to be and how things are going to be really incredibly stresses me out. So it's really a goal to keep just focusing on how things are now and how things are looking now and not get caught up in worrying about the future. So um, that ended up getting more personal than I thought it was going to be. I'm really looking forward to the next year. I'm really hoping that this stuff helps me to read really good books and good books that are here that I'm excited for um, and I would love to know what your goals are like because I've seen from Twitter and other people's videos some people have got really strict goals to get themselves back on track some people are just doing like no goals whatsoever some people are going really easy on themselves like I would love to know what your goals are looking like for next year if you are setting any and happy new year I hope 2022 is better than 2021. I really do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.